Women's Social Corner, I am Janvi and today we are going to deep dive into the topic of love, romance, sex and relationships. I am going to sit with Raksha Bharadia. She is the founder of Bonobology. It's an online portal that deals exclusively about relationships. She is also an author and today we will sit with her and learn more about the topic of love and relationships. Welcome Raksha to Women's Social Corner. And to start with, I mean, you have dealt a lot with relationships, but tell us why it is more difficult now than it ever was, you know, to be in a relationship. Thank you so much, Janvi, for having me on this platform. Yes, relationships are getting more and more difficult by the hour, I would say. Uh, there are a lot of reasons for this. Uh, but to me, what comes first and foremost in my mind is, that at once, like I have a daughter who's 25 and the other who's 28. I think, you know, at one point they are living in two worlds. One is the traditional Indian setup or the kind of world they've grown up with, with their dada dadis, nana nani, chacha, mami, masa, and you know, those rules of how a relationship should be navigated. And then there is the other world that they see sitting, you know, on their in their bedroom. With, through the laptop or through social media, a world which exists in the West, you know, in the US, in Europe, or through OTTs, through Netflix. So through show, social media and through all the shows that we watch, they see two very different kinds of relationships. Yeah. And that is why they just don't know what means what, like where to be. Because we Indians have a very specific way of dealing. You know, uh, roles are very defined, even today. Yeah. Uh, and in the West, it's very different. So I think it's it's very difficult for them. It's very difficult for today's generation to know what to follow, what not to follow, because two massive different inputs are coming in, yeah. and it's being hammered day in and day out. Especially with even if you think of the you know social media, Instagram influencers we follow, yeah. we follow somebody from let's say Europe or French people who are talking about you know sexuality and romance in a different way and then there is us where i recently had an interview with a person who was uh, who started a dating app and they said that one reason why people actually don't have sexual comfort with their partners because there is no place for them to get intimate with oh, because yes. girlfriend ko aap ghar nahi le ja sakte ho yeah. and uh, because parents hain and what do you do so what they say and what actually happens I mean, it's very different that's one hmm. Another thing I think is that this whole thing about decision making. So, you know, in our parents' generation, it was very easy. The man was the decision maker. The woman kind of kept the home and the family together. But now with women stepping out and working, there is a lot more equality than there was. Okay. And also we become more nuclear as families than joint. So what happens with this is a boy in a relationship when they're dating, they see their mother who puts everything aside for the family. While they want a very smart, fun, you know, working girlfriend, but they can't imagine the girlfriend will keep him aside for her work. This is something that uh, Professor Ahilya told me when I was talking to her, she's in Bangalore. But if the girls are getting happy about it, let me tell you, you're gone. So what happens <laughs> with girls is, they want to be an equal in the relationship but they still want the boy to take care of the manly things they would want the boy to pay they'd not be comfortable paying and, or they would like think a little differently yeah. they would not want to manage cars they would not want to manage engines they would still call a boy to fix Do that, that tire yeah. so while you want to be equal you don't want to be a full equal yeah. so you want to be equal in certain roles i think again there is a lot of navigation that is required because equality and gender roles which were defined yeah now they're they're blurred mm -hmm. they are not defined as they were so i think it's a flux um the third thing i would say is that you know initially in our parents age you could you know the man could protect the woman but now with women stepping out with the cyber world that we live in yeah. You know, a man can't be the protector. So again, the gender role will has been like, divided, divided, you know. And other than that, all these new things coming up, situationship and people who are work. So we had a couple, yeah. uh, both of them were working, uh, you know, they were writers with us. Finally, they broke up because one believed in veganism and the other didn't. Oh. So I think today's generation are also very 
they feel very strongly about what they feel okay. so which is fine so i think it's just a it's just a phase where you are kind of learning how to okay. negotiate um i would say these three things these and of course there are so many so um there's one more i would like to mention because this is an era of quick gratification of everything quick so we get into relationships quicker we get out of relationships yeah. quicker uh so one of the things that again one uh, therapist had shared with me what happens is when a girl and a guy they come from different cultural settings in terms of city yeah. so there is a city based boy who grew up in a city and a girl who grew up in a small town hmm. they've come to the city to uh, for education they both study in the same college maybe then they get job together and then they of course fall in love and get married and sign 100 emis you know fridge and tv and the house yeah. but the entire core of a person who's been brought up in a small town is very different from somebody who's from a city and once you start sharing you know those differences come, come in, in. The- so i think one of the biggest issues when you move from casual dating to serious dating and then to proposal or marriage is try and definitely take premarital counseling okay. and to understand that what is the cultural setup you've grown up with and what are the things you identify with and what are the things which you know which are very new to you so and can you find a common ground everything is about negotiation yeah. what happens is when we jump into a relationship in that love phase and we don't really realize address yeah we don't address these very very different issues that we've grown up with or different cultural moorings that we kind of root with then we are like oh you are not like this but i am different and you are different so i think having these very serious talks before going you know before taking your relationship to the next level what do you think about full time work half time work Hmm. have you thought about how you feel about having kids what about living with in laws important questions we even today they are not discussing it okay okay it's That's all about why. oh my god i love yeah. yeah so it's extremely important to journey yeah. so hmm. when we have such you know complicated relationships and then we also have more options hmm. what do you think on youngsters or people wanting to have multiple partners do you think it can be justified okay so i think we are not biologically monogamous okay so and i mean we are running a website we get so many queries a day so one line which i have understood is socially we are monogamous sab aisa sochte hain ki one partner but individually we are non monogamous so people are cheating all the time it comes to surface when it's being caught people are cheating here from here people are cheating from here and people are cheating physically so multiple partners that what you're talking about it's always been there i mean prostitution is the oldest profession of the world we've always had multiple partners they are either known or not known but today with all the spywares and this mm. you know um relationships are just they just come out in the open yeah. that is when you're talking about a relationship which is on the sly now if you're talking about polyamory so i feel that i have done a lot of research on mm. this but the interesting fact is that no society which believes in open relationship has been able to uh, pass it down to the second generation interesting because when kids come in the picture then mate guarding and all becomes an issue mm. we are not sophisticated enough to compartmentalize our romantic relationship so if you want security from a person you will be jealous if the person goes out with a second person so i don't think we have the mental capability to understand and to deal with this mm-hmm. and that is why all societies that have been polyamorous they just don't flourish so so far monogamous relationships are the only ones that have kind of worked so well explained and thank you for saying yeah. this <laughs> <laughs> but hamara jo biological underpinning hai yeah. that is polyamorous <laughs> yeah. i many will relate to that so don't feel bad yeah. but the thing is it's going to be a very chaotic world if you know, everyone the, is with everyone yeah it's yeah. you will not be able to navigate it how will you put primary secondary third yeah. you know there are certain rules where they say that okay you can have another partner yeah. but don't meet them more than thrice in a year now you know human emotions <laughs> just don't work like that yeah. you will get attached True. so i don't know I, but in this setup what do you also call cheating 
in that sense you know because that also that's also a word which is often discussed but no one knows when do you call your partner as someone who's cheating like when do you label that oh my god so this is a very very heavy topic and uh, one very interesting fact is i did a book called chaos in that i went through the country interviewing sexologists marriage therapists psychiatrists historians so um and counselors yeah. so seven out of 10 cases that most counselors get they get because of cheating and that is when that is when a person confesses or is caught and then they go and seek counseling that listen i want to now save my marriage yeah. because my partner knows that i have cheated or i had to confess that i have cheated so now what i think the more important question here janvi is that your primary relationship don't throw it away for cheating okay don't throw the baby with the water the cheating could be very very simply a small fling mm-hmm. i'm not saying it's good and i'm not justifying it but think of everything that you built with your primary, primary partner. partner you know those years of sharing i'm not even saying about kids home yeah. taking care of each other's Emotion. parents emotional okay. things right the person has been there for you you've been for yeah. that for that person you've seen ups and downs the person knows your vulnerabilities your likes dislikes mm-hmm. and you're comfortable then the parents come and you taking care of their parents the they're taking care of your parents you have a common friend circle maybe you have a home together which is shared then you have kids which is shared uh, you have each other's uh, you know you have each other's back so if the cheating or the other relationship if it's a passing thing don't make it the center of your primary relationship it's very difficult i know but trust me we have lot of counselors we have counsel lot of people to you know for their marriage to move on or their serious mm-hmm. relationship to move on from cheating and i say that don't throw the baby with the water True. so assess the other relationship mm-hmm. is it serious mm-hmm. if it's not you know figure out get in touch with a the therapist figure out how to deal with it and it's as difficult for the person who's cheated as it is for the person who's been cheated on yeah. because there is a very strong sense of guilt so so it's better to like accept and move on i don't know if it's better to accept and move on but i definitely think one should so there'll be a so there's a very beautiful line which i read in one of the shows where this one person cheats on the woman hmm. and when she gets to know uh you know she keeps hurting him she keeps putting him down there's this whole rage there's grief and then in the end he says are you done are you done hurting me for because i've cheated because now let's move on Lovely. So you know you have to kind of give that whole thing you know the person who's been cheated on yeah. will go through a range of emotions True. betrayal rage grief they will not trust and the person who is cheated will have to take it once they are done you know maybe they'll be ready so it's very different but i would say that work on it work on the relationship True. True. acceptance to jab aayega tab aayega yeah. and when we are starting a new relationships many a time the other partner emphasizes that you should not be friends with your ex what do you think on this like should we be friends should we just leave the chapter there and there what do, what should people do so i think it's very subjective and i think if i am in a relationship current relationship i know what i feel about my ex yeah. if i am still emotionally attached to my ex whether i think i can handle it or not i should not be in touch because i cannot expect my current partner to kind of be okay with it hmm. if i'm not attached if i'm convinced i'm not attached the person doesn't mean shit to me hmm. i think then it's how well you explain to your current partner that listen this is it hmm. even then i would say give a little benefit of the doubt to the current partner and if they are uncomfortable negotiate a timeline hmm. say but first and foremost the work that is required is internal Yeah. where am i with my ex and that is something which is a very deep seated work which i think most people don't do true and most of the times i see from the kind of queries we get is people use a current partner as rebound to get over the ex to get over the ex yeah so us tarah se kaam nahi chalega aapko bahut honest rehna padega true with what you want yeah, yeah. and what you think is the reality absolutely When we talk about love and relationships it's mostly about people in their 20s or maybe in their 30s but what about people wanting to get into relationships in their 40s or 50s you know if you want to throw a light on that so i actually interestingly just started a channel called uh, beyond 40 with raksha mm. i think the most important thing about 
you know being in your 40s is your relationship with yourself mm. so a time comes when you're like i am done doing for my parents for my in-laws for my husband for my mm. friends for my kids for my home for my staff you know listening to you know uh, my bosses taking care of my colleagues because as women we are always taking care nurturing filling in the gap i think beyond 40 we just know what we want the breaded us yeah. so we just know what we want and we you know one is less willing to put up with shit mm. so i think the relationships then are very strong okay. you have had your 40 years of knowing what you shouldn't have done mm. so you will not take you know you will not say yes to what shouldn't be there mm. so i think if you're getting into your relationship with 40s know that you will be starting here wow. so you know at 20s and 30s you start here and then you kind of go there but in 40s you start here yeah so i think it's a good time to be in a relationship lovely yeah but um, anything else for you know people who would want to find love late in life do you, what do you want to say like things to take care of or no they they're just very self aware people i think one of the things that i've seen with people beyond 40 is the baggage past baggage is so strong about things that have gone wrong that they're not being able to deal so i had read this beautiful line which says heal so that you can let people love you and that you can love so i believe that one should and this is actually not just for 40s even for a 25 year old you know you've had your a relationship yeah. make sure you've healed from that so that with the next relationship you can let the person love you and you can love the person so you've got, there's a lot of internal work here there's a lot of internal healing yeah. which i think is extremely important and here i would like to add another thing janvi uh this is uh, one uh, psychiatrist dr jain who shared with me one of the biggest mistakes we make in love is we we disrespect each other and then we say but i love you mm-hmm. so for example uh, you know we had, we we in a relationship and i'm angry because of something yeah. and i'll put the person down terribly and horribly in public yeah. and like you are shit and maybe verbally abuse even personally yeah. do all kinds of things i would never do mm-hmm. and then next morning i would say i'm sorry you know i was raging yeah. but you know i love you right okay so the thing i want to ask everyone here is is love justified when you disrespect and when we say sorry we say but i love you right we don't even mean we don't even understand that how we put a person down in the name of love sure. so i always think that respect whether you love a person or not try and see every time you're disrespecting a person and we are going to disrespect because we take people for granted yeah. they will take us for granted so we are going to at some point or not disrespect our yeah. loved ones but at least apologize with sincerity and honesty true, true. you know and so that yeah. is important and when you call of disrespect we have also seen relationships where there are emotional abusers yeah. but we take a lot of time to identify that what advice would you want to give oh to people to oh my god so our in house counselor driti just shared something so interesting this is after like consulting maybe 80 90 women huh? so she says this is a very specific women issue in india okay. women are a lot more clingier to men and however abuse they are they want to make it work yeah. i don't know what is behind that so i think we take a lot of emotional abuse because somewhere we are insecure we are scared i think self love is the answer yeah. so i read a beautiful thing today only which says just say i'm worth it like again it's about internal work janvi yeah. like why will you take abuse because you think it's okay you think i may lose something ask yourself what am i scared of what am i fearing yeah. and So one of the things I would actually all, always ask is if you had to share that incident with your mother what would your mother say like let's say if you think this is an abuse okay and you still want to be with that person mm. think your mother is there and tell that incident to your mother imaginary yeah. mother who's there mm. would your mother approve what would your mother say is something that you have to tell yourself okay. maybe that would work that would work yeah that's a great piece of advice uh 
looking forward i mean what are the other complications in relationships especially that take place when a person a single person is falling in love with someone who is married uh-huh. and if he or she becomes a third person in a relationship and in society we whether we talk about it or we don't talk about it but we see it around us how do you see this equation oh god it's disastrous for the single person yeah we have a lot of cases uh, where you know the third wheel uh, so because the married person will always keep so first of all one very interesting research data 97% of marriages when they get to know that the person's having an affair they don't break only 3% break so whenever the per- single person yeah. who's in a relationship with a married person if he or she is telling you yeah. that they are going to leave their marriage partner for you it's not <laughs> going to happen i'm not saying that they're lying but i'm saying it's not going to happen most of the time secondly you will feel very neglected on holidays on weekends their phones will be out of reach you will not be allowed to call and you will find yourself very lonely the third thing is for the single person you are probably losing a chance at a real relationship while you're waiting for the married person to get out of that relationship so i see that it has everything going on for the married person but there are all the cons for the single person in the relationship so don't do it however even when i say i know you're going to do it if you are in love so what i would recommend is go and speak to a counselor and tackle it one step at a time ask the questions draw boundaries ask for timelines and let the married person default on the timeline again and again and maybe at some point you will understand that this is not going to work yeah So okay. you've got to make them face the music and nice. and you've got to call them out. Yeah. And just accept the reality. Yes. I mean acceptance aa jayega because Simon de Beauvoir said that when two people are in love it's beautiful. But only when one is serious and the other is not it becomes silly. So for the single person your relationship is silly. uh i mean you are in love you are intense but for the other person it's just silly yeah. and the triangles look fancy only only in films oh, not in yes. real life it's very very disastrous for the single person true true another disastrous thing also happens when the world is becoming global there are long distance relationships which are which can be nightmare if not ta- tackled yeah. properly because there are a lot of chances of cheating there are a lot of trust issues what do you want to say about young people who, who know you're going to long distance relationships I think uh, long distance relationships they're very tricky. Uh So there's a lot of literature, literature out there but I do believe it's become a little easier with all the video conferencing calls and all but still you know there is this entire human need to be touched you know to do things together that will not be addressed from my understanding it it leads to a lot of complication and it leads to a lot of dissatisfaction i mean but if you have to do it because of economic reason or whatever you've got to do it but i don't honestly janvi i don't know what else to say about this i just think they are very It's tricky very tricky true another tricky thing is uh, you know many companies have this rule that uh, you shouldn't fall in love with someone in the office Okay. you know falling in love with people in the workplace that's yeah. another thing it's very difficult it's <laughs> do you have any rules similar no, rules in the office we don't have it in our office but <laughs> i feel that i mean you will fall in love with the person that you are close yeah, to yeah. so you're spending so much time with a colleague hmm. you may you will fall in love so while i know that it's difficult i know it's going to happen yeah. and i don't know what you can do about it because when you fall out of love yeah either one of them leaves the job yeah. or then it becomes very very tricky True. but i think this has no solution because you will not be able to keep away keep <laughs> True. True. um whenever two people are falling in love especially in arranged marriages uh, two families share each other's horoscopes but no one is talking about sexual compatibility mm. and many a times when sex is not there in the relationship it falls Absolutely. apart yeah Uh, when you are counseling other people or people from your team what the advices do you give to people where there is so you know now intimacy coaching has become a big thing okay. so one of the biggest problems that i have uh, encountered as mm-hmm. the founder of bonobology mm-hmm. and because we we actually just got an intimacy coach on board mm-hmm. and uh, so but we've got a lot of queries so i think mm-hmm. the biggest thing is all these you know things which are you know laid out oh Uh, women must orgasm oh twice a week oh this 
I think we are too scared to communicate with our partners. Mm-hmm. So I think in this very very delicate realm, I yeah. think we should speak to an intimacy coach, to sexologists, and try and understand how to navigate this very delicate, sensitive area. We should communicate with our partners. How we mm-hmm. should not lie to them. You know how you are with a person in an intimate setting. Yeah. It tells you a lot about that person. So let's try and be honest there. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest problem with us Indians are we are not honest in bedroom, and um, you know we are just. So that's why they say that for a lot of people, sex is just a chore. Yeah. You know, after like a couple of years. So let's try and kind of fight against the trend. Let's seek counseling and. Sex is beautiful, and it makes the relationship beautiful, and give True. it the due importance. By because if you don't know how to cook, you go and take cooking classes, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's as simple as that. You don't know how to drive, you take driving lessons. So just learn, just go. Just learn, yeah. It's not a taboo. Yeah, as simple <laughs> as that. <laughs> um, as uh, people are changing, so are the relationships, and now we have Gen Z. Their mm. idea of relationships is very different. One of the uh you know term i recently read was nato but not att- mm. attached to an outcome uh, uh, what do you think is the future of relationships how do you think they are going to change what are the complications that are going to come what are the beautiful things that are going to come a- any ideas so i think we are in a flux i think the man and the woman they'll they have to navigate a new equal i think that will happen of course there is ai there is you know you 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 speak to uh, but i think the basic need of a person is to connect yeah. it's to be heard it's to be loved it's to be needed that can only happen with a human mm-hmm. i think the more we introspect yeah. the more we give space the more we will navigate this very tricky love waters mm-hmm. so i think it'll get better True. i don't think it'll get worse, worse. Oh. because uh, like when i see with my kids they both working like one's engaged the other's yeah. married they both are working they both respect the other's work mm. so i think with more equality with more understanding and space i think the relationships will get better and see in the past relationships just survive because you were married for the kids over the society if the relationship is not working anymore mm. maybe it's time to let it go yeah but don't just let it go like that give it a serious thought and then yeah. take the steps like see i mean go speak to a counselor understand what are the things not being met put the pros and cons yeah so yeah. you know deal with it that way mm-hmm. so, yeah. when we are talking about gen z what another uh, issue is that gen z is the loneliest generation oh my god yes and what do you think that can be done because we change partners and we we have so many distractions but we are just so lonely at the end of the day do you think spirituality can help or something else can help what do you think is the answer to that <laughs> i think one thing that will help drastically is not having your phone as your first partner okay. because we are being entertained by netflix shows by instagram reels we are not going out there and putting us ourselves out there for deeper conversation yeah. so invest in real people go offline go that is the way to not be lonely go offline true So I think that's what I would say. Thank you for the wise words. And <laughs> lastly, you want to talk about uh, the counselling bit, yeah. or you know, your okay. new projects. Yeah. So uh, in Bonobology, we have just introduced. Uh, we have in-house counsellors. We give it at a very affordable rate, five hundred rupees an hour. So uh, and our counsellors are fantastic. The big problem is, you know, for any physical ailment, we'll go run to the doctor. We'll pay like lot of money. But for anything to do with here. till we are not like seriously suicidal or crying all the time we just don't go and try and get answers but the the counselor will not give you answers the counselor is going to ask you questions which are and the answers are within you so they just help you to access those answers so um i encourage you if you are having a serious issue or if you think that oh my god i need an answer for this just go ahead book a session not with us with any expert out there and try and figure out because they are trained So the one big difference I've seen is we go to our friends. Friends are not trained. They bring their own bias, yeah. and they are not objective. Yeah. This is and a counselor will do all of that. They'll tell you, "Oh my God, wait, wait! You're not thinking. This is not correct. This is the thing." So just go, 
go seek professional help like you would if you want to learn calligraphy you go to an expert right so just go and seek the help and just i think i mean i have sought counseling so many times in my life when my daughter was dating when i had issues i mean i've been to a counselor for about 15 20 times for different issues and i just think they help you understand your life better and you take better decisions interesting yeah so, so that's why a counselor uh, we should go to a counselor then to a friend at least for advices on yeah matlab for something yeah. serious because of something serious yeah yeah don't get your answers from your friends because agar unka break up hoga to wo unka break up hua hoga to wo kahenge ki nahi nahi bekar hi hai sab ladke chhod do yeah. but you know it's not like that you've got to be like you've got to be sensible yeah. you know you got to have sensible answers and you can't have subjective answers you have to have objective answers to deal with a situation yeah. you need to go to a subject expert <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh, raksha thank you so much for your time and uh, for your uh, answers uh, for more such interviews for more such conversations keep watching women social corner thank you thank you so much thank you.